you talked last week about, and I almost, I thought it was another Rush Limbaugh moment. You talked about how ISIS is building hospitals, creating jobs, and sending out Social Security checks. Well, and, and sort, of, sort is, of, yeah. All right, but you, you said that. They're, they're repairing, they're right. rehabbing and repairing hospitals. They are restaffing right. them. You literally have doctors from Algeria, from France, from Libya who have been going to Syria and going to Iraq to work in these new hospitals that are being re- refurbished and rebooted by ISIS. Yes, they're starting I schools back. Pardon? Uh, well, who, who in their right mind would even care after they went in there and raped and pillaged their women and children, killed anybody that wasn't Islamist, the Christians and the Jews? I mean, burned them, cut off their heads. Who would care what they're doing anywhere after they do all those things. Well, Dan, I think that you're not thinking this through, uh, respectfully. Who in Germany in 1935 would, who is not Jewish, who is a good German Christian, who would be willing to accept anything Hitler says, given that he's in the process of setting up death camps for Jews? I mean, talk about robbing and raping and pillaging. The Germans did it on steroids. And yet, you know, 15-year-olds were volunteering for the army in 1944. I just say... My my point is, Dan, that when ISIS goes... ISIS is recapturing Sunni territories, okay, by and large. And Sunni territories have felt really badly dissed in Iraq and Syria. Saddam Hussein was a Sunni. When he got overthrown and Maliki came in, they kicked all the Sunnis out of government. The 50% of the economy of Iraq was government-owned factories. The government was in the business of making steel and concrete and everything else. L. Paul Bremer privatized all those, and all those. And what happened was they ended up all in the hands of Shia businessmen. The first business to officially open in Iraq, by the way, was the Bank of Iran, which is Shia. And so you've got in these Sunni-controlled territories now a Shia minority that is that 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 has basically been running the show. And the same thing in Syria. Bashir al-Assad, the reason why he's the bad boy in the neighborhood, is because he's an Alawite. He's close to a Shia rather than being a fundamentalist Sunni. And so these Sunni movements, they come into an area that might have 3% or 5% or 6% or 8% uh, you know, of uh, Zidi, uh, Yazidis, or however you say it, or Christians, or Jews, or whatever it may be, people who are not Muslims. And they pull them out, and they kill them, and they do it very publicly. And the rest of the population goes, hey, finally somebody stopped those SOBs, and because we've been oppressed now since, two, since, you know, since 2001, basically. And we want a Sunni government back. Even you know, if, they're, if they're SOBs, at least they're our SOBs, which is how the Germans were viewing the German government. It's how the Italians were viewing uh, Mussolini. It's how the, the, the uh, Spaniards were, were viewing, uh, what's his name, uh, you know, King, you know, it wasn't King, uh, the, the guy who was the leader of Spain during World War II. Um, I'm forgetting his name, I'm sorry. But yeah, do you understand what I'm saying, Dan? Yeah, but if you think these people have only been oppressed since 2001, you're on another planet. These people are all oppressed for centuries. No, I'm talking about really serious damage. You had in in Iraq, for example. Iraq was the the Paris of the Middle East up until the 1990s. It, you you know, women went to college in roughly the same proportion as men. Women worked in the workplace. And nobody wore a headscarf. It was a secular society. Saddam Hussein was a secularist. The Ba'ath Party is the socialist Ba'ath Party. Everybody had a food allowance. Everybody had a house. Everybody had free education. Everybody had free health care. When L. Paul Bremer went into Iraq after we took down the government, they said, we're going to prove that libertarianism works better than socialism. We're going to do away with the Ba'ath Socialist Party. Everybody who's a member of it gets fired. All the teachers were fired. All the, all the police were fired. All the military was fired. All these government-owned businesses were going to privatize. We're going to put them for sale. We're going to take the progressive income tax that Iraq had, and they had a progressive income tax where the top rate was over 50%. We're going to replace that with a flat tax of 17% so that even the guy who's only making the equivalent of a couple hundred dollars a year, he's going to be paying 17% income tax. And we're going to do all these things because the brilliant guys from the Reagan administration tell us that this is how you make a country work. And they did these things, and what happened was everything fell apart. The, the free market didn't 
stand up and 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 fulfill the needs. The, the, they were not getting water. Half, you know, millions of people died in Iraq, or hundreds of thousands certainly in Iraq, just in Iraq. I mean, we can apply this to Afghanistan as well. Just because the water was contaminated, because the water treatment plants weren't working anymore, because they couldn't find a for-profit corporation that would privatize them. And when we send Halliburton and these other companies in to run them, they do such a bad job because all they're interested in is getting the money from the Americans. Their water supply systems weren't working. Their septic systems weren't working. It was contaminating their water supplies. Their schools were, were down. Their hospitals were down. They were feeling like we had destroyed their country, and they were right. And so ISIS comes in and says, we're going to put the hospital back to work. We're going to put the school back to work. We're going to start providing food rations, and we're going to provide money to retired people.